Hey, this is Brian with WorshipTutorials.com. One thing that I think is really important to do is something that we call Celebrate the Wins. We do this at my church all the time. We do it on a weekly basis, like right after a service, our leadership teams and volunteer teams will get together and talk about what went really well. Uh, we do it during the week, like on a Monday meeting, and today is Monday, I think it's an appropriate day to do this. And I would encourage you to do it at your church. So my question for you today is, what was the best thing about Sunday? If you were involved in leadership in a church, uh, if you were leading worship or on a worship team, or maybe if you're a pastor, uh, what was the biggest win from Sunday? And I encourage you to make this a practice with, with your volunteers, with your, with your staff teams, anyone that you kind of work together with. Uh, in church. So for me, I'd say hands down, it was congregation engagement during worship this past week. Now I lead worship at a large church, a multi-site church. You could call us a mega church, um, but I lead worship at a an environment that's, that's a lot smaller. It's called Coffee House, and it's probably uh, maybe 80 to 100 people uh, any given weekend. And what it is is sort of an acoustic lower key alternative to uh, to the main worship service that happens downstairs. If you see a lot of the Sunday vlogs that we do, you'll you'll kind of get a feeling for what I'm talking about. So it's usually a smaller band with more acoustic arrangements. And I have a feeling a lot of you are in churches this size. And this past weekend, um, there were two songs that stuck out to me. One was Go Tell It on the Mountain, and the other one was a new song to our church, uh, Great Are You Lord by All Sons and Daughters. Not a brand new song, but the first time that we sang it. Now we did the Need to Breed version of Go Tell It on the Mountain, which was awesome, and it kind of had that raw sort of acoustic feel to it, just the way that they record it. And uh, people really got into it. And I think, you know, it's Christmas time. Uh, it's in the middle of December right now. So we're, we're just a couple weeks away from Christmas or maybe less. So people are really kind of in that spirit. We talked in a Sunday vlog uh, last weekend about Christmas songs. And uh, a lot of you might not like Christmas songs. That's what I said, because I'm not a huge fan of Christmas songs. But people love to sing them. And so um, it was definitely a win for us. People were clapping and, and just getting into it. And then when we did Great Are You Lord, um, when we do a new song, typically what I like to do is talk about the song just a little bit. You don't have a lot of time to do this, but if you do it right, it can really help people engage. So I just introduced it as a new song and I said a few words about it and then I taught the chorus, which, I mean, Great Are You Lord, if you don't know the song, it's a great song. Uh, it's really repetitive, which a lot of people I've heard say negative things about songs that are really repetitive, but uh, it does help people latch onto them quickly and really engage with them. So we did the chorus, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. And I think I said um, something along the lines of what we're saying is that God has given us everything, even, even the breath that we breathe is given to us by God. So in response to what God has done for us uh, through the birth of his son, and so I kind of tied it into the Christmas season. What we're saying is that we're gonna give everything we have back to him, our entire lives back to him. So we pour out our praise to you only, sang the chorus. But what surprised me was we hit the first verse and it was like the whole room was singing it back to me. I've never experienced that with a brand new song. Um, so I think a lot of those people listen to it on the radio. Uh, but it got me to thinking, um, what is it that, that causes the congregation to engage? Because some weekends it's like people just belt out the songs and some weekends you're just looking at a bunch of blank faces and they're just like looking at you. Uh, which doesn't feel very good. Um, now you can't judge what's going on in a person's mind by the expression on their face because often it's, there's not a direct correlation. But uh, it made me think, okay, what is it that that got people to sing, to engage in worship this weekend. One thing is, is we had a full uh, stage of people. In this coffee house environment, often we don't have a full stage. Sometimes it's just two or three people. So this time we had, well, we don't have, we don't use a full kit up in coffee house. We had a cajon, we had a bass player, we had a keys player and me. And our keys player sang harmony vocals with me as well. And, and great musicians and they were really well prepared coming in. So the arrangements that we did sounded really good uh, because people were very well prepared. But also we just had more people on the stage and that helps uh, draw people in. So I want to encourage you, if you're in a smaller church uh, or any kind of size church and you're really struggling uh, to fill your stage with volunteers, 
uh, keep at it. And it's not an easy thing. You can click up here or below, and I'll link to a video that I made with Bryce, one of the uh, worship leaders at my church, where we talked about the importance of and how to build volunteer teams. I think it's probably the most important thing that you do as a worship leader, build volunteer teams. Because having people on your stage will encourage people to engage. It makes a big difference. I actually had several people come up to me after and just say, um, how powerful the worship was this weekend, and I, I know it had a lot to do with uh, the people we had on stage. Two of the guys that I had with me on the stage are related. Uh, this past weekend, they're brothers-in-law, and both of them are just full of joy. Like, you get around them and they always, their, their face is just lit up with a smile, and I know that they, they put that on, on stage as well. Um, and so I think that stage presence had a lot to do with it, and I think just the fact that we were in Christmas and, uh, you know, people like to sing Christmas songs. And that's really what got it started was that Christmas song. So I think another thing that I kind of come away with uh, is have a song in your set every week that you know your church is going to connect with and sing. And if you can, do it early because I really believe um, that people latched on to Go Tell It on the Mountain and it got them into a spirit of worship. So let me know in the comments, uh, what was the best thing about yesterday's service for you if you were involved in a worship service? Uh, and share it with your teams as well. Share it with your staff, with your volunteers. And also do this, if you're a worship leader, if you're in leadership in your church, uh, send your volunteers that served this weekend in whatever area, send them an email Tell them what it is that you're celebrating. Tell them the win that you're celebrating and tell them explicitly that they helped make this happen or they, they did make it happen. That is very encouraging to receive as a volunteer and will kind of put wind in their sails. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.